A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. When life gives you random Twitter posts, you make improvised sessions. At least this is what my grandpa always used to say. Or not. I'm not certain. Maybe he said it in a parallel universe somewhere. Earth 661. I don't care. So, today this abomination, x plus 9 squared plus x plus 10 squared, blah blah blah, up until x plus 19 squared is equal to 11 squared. We need to solve for x. It's an improvised session. Um, <laughs> I have a certain idea in mind to actually make this a bit worthwhile. I'm not just going to go through straight, just multiplying everything out and so on. So we are going to see if it works out. Um, yeah. Try it out for yourself with your answer down there in the comments below and how you solved it. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over in Brain. More information at the end of the video. So stick around, they got some good stuff going on. And now let us dive right in. So for hell, I'm not going to write everything out once again, just like this. So we are going to put it into the one and only sigma notation, okay? We are real sigmas here, so we are going to do it like that. So this right here is the sum where k ranges from none to 19 of, and our terms are of the form x plus k squared. And this right here is equal to 11 squared. Okay, this looks way better. This is actually way cooler. And now we can start to fill around with the argument of the sigma notation. So this right here, at least that's my idea, um, is just a binomial formula. So we can rewrite it to the sum where k reaches from 9 to 19 um, of, and this turns into x squared plus 2kx plus k squared. And this is equal to 11 squared. Okay. Um, and the cool thing about this right here, it's a finite sum, so we can just simply without any restrictions whatsoever, break it up into um, those separate terms. So this right here turns into the sum of the same indices that we have right here. I'm going to leave those out for a bit um, of x squared plus the sum of 2kx plus the sum of k squared. Um, okay, now we have those terms where those x terms are constant, so we could drag it out of the sigma notation. Don't get fooled here if you sum up all those x squares. It's not like an integral where now it's independent of x or something of that sort. We are basically integrating, you could say, or summing up over an empty sum, you could say. So just imagine that if we were to multiply all of those um, binomial formulas out, we would get the x squared term exactly the amount of times that we have parentheses here. From 9 to 19, that should amount to 11. Um, I want to make sure, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So what we actually get here is 11x squared. That's the first one, done. Now here, what we get is two times x, that's independent. We can drag it to the outside, plus two times x, and sigma from k nine to 19 of a, no k, not x. And then we also have the sum of k squared, plus k equals to nine to 19 of k squared. Now, Here's where something cool should come in. This right here is just little gauss. So the sum from 0 to n turns to n times n plus 1 over 2. We made several videos on that here before on this channel. But the thing is, it doesn't start at 0. So we need to get a bit creative. Imagine that. Um, we would add all the terms from 0 to 8 to the sum, turning this into the sum from 0 to 19. But we can just add something to this whole thing and just let it be. We also need to subtract the term once again. So this right here is the same as the sum from 0 to 19 of k. This turns into n times n plus 1 over 2, but n, so our upper bound is 19. So this term right here should be 19 times 20 over 2. But as mentioned before, we can just add everything. We also need to subtract 
the sum from 0 to 8, and this is once again just little Gauss. So 8 times 9 divided by 2. Okay. Um, I hope this does work out. I made videos on that previously, how you can do little Gauss with in-between intervals. And we can probably go through the same thing right here, but I need to think about the formula once again. Um, if you sum up the squares, note that it, if you sum up cubes, that turns into something of the squares, to the sum of the squares, something of sorts. But what happens if you sum up the squares? I think this was little gauss, but with an extra term to it. Little gauss with, with the odd numbers. But I would need to think about the denominator there. I don't think it's a 2. But we'll get to that in a second. Let us do some mental calculations here. 20 over 2 is 10. So this right here is 190. Minus this right here is 4. 4 times 9 is going to turn into 36. So this right here amounts to 150, 154. And 154 times 2 overall is going to turn into... Oh no, I think we can let the two be just because um, we need to, we, we had an 11 squared here. 11 squared, that means if we were to divide by 11, then this right here is going to vanish, but we're still going to have an 11. Yeah, um, we are going to let the two be because of the quadratic formula later. We can just cancel out. So this turns into 154. Now we just need to think about the k-squared terms. The logic is the same. We need to add the sum from 0 to 8 and then subtract it once again. Now I just need to think. Um, I believe the formula for the sum of the squares from uh, k equals to 0 to n of k squared is something of the form. I believe it was something with little gauss. So n times n plus 1 over 2, something of that sort, and I think we need to multiply the dot numbers to it. But I'm not certain about what we get down here. Um, let us just do it for n equals to 3. This right here turns into 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. That's the same as 1 plus 9 plus 4 is 14. Okay. If we plug 3 into here, we are going to get 3 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2 times... I'm just going to add something. I'm, I'm going to call it T. Uh, 2 times 3 plus 1. Okay, this right here is uh, 12. 12 over 2 is 6. And then we are going to get a 7 here times 7 over T. 6 times 7 is 42. Over t must be equal to 14. And t must be equal to 3. So we actually get a factor of 3 down here. So all of this divided by 6, I suppose. Oh. I hope that's the formula. Let us do a quick check because I'm not 100% certain. For, so for 4... If we add 4 squared, that is going to turn into 14 plus 16 is 30. If we plug 4 into here, this is um, 4 times 5 times, and then we are going to get 9 divided by 6. 4, this right here is 2, and then 3, this is 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, this should check out. So this right here is the formula for the sum of squares. So we can just simply go ahead. If we do this from uh, 9 to 19, then this right here is the same as the sum from 0 to 19 minus the sum from 0 to 8. So we are going to get uh, 19 times 20 times um, 38 plus 1 is for, uh, 39 divided by 6. Oh, oh okay. That is looking uh, bleak. We're going to see about that. And then minus the sum from 0 to 8. So this right here gives us 8 times 9 times and then 17 divided by 6. 
Okay. Now we need to do some in the calculations and then we are almost done with figuring out the polynomial. It's pretty much a pretty efficient way, I would say. It's, it's, it's not too shabby. Okay, this right here turns into... So 6 and 39 have a common factor of 3. So this right here turns into 30 and 2. This right here turns into a 10 and this is going to die somewhere in Mexico. So we have 109 t times 13 minus um, this right here is going to turn into a 4 and a 3. So we have 12 times 17. Okay, now this right here is 1,900. Um, 3 times 19 is 57. That, that's a very good prime. I really like 57. Uh, so plus 570 minus, and then we have 120 minus 7 times 12. This is 84. Okay, and now overall what we are going to get, this right here is 2470 minus 120 is going to give us uh, 350. And then minus 84, minus 80, this is 270, and then minus 466, 2266. Okay, nice. Um, okay, so this right here turns into overall um, 11 squared. Down here is equal to 11x squared. And then plus 2 times 154 times x plus 2266. All right. And now we need to divide both sides by 11 at first, or, or by 11 squared overall, because... No, we are going to divide only by 11, because then we get rid of this right here, and then we subtract 11 to get ourselves the groundworks for the quadratic formula. So dividing by 11 gives us 11 is equal to, okay, obviously x squared plus 154. 1 minus 5 is negative 4 plus 4. That's most definitely divisible by 11. I wouldn't expect anything less from this problem because otherwise it would just be <laughs> a pretty shitty problem um, if we would include fractions here. Uh, 154, this is 11, 12, 14, 14, so 2 times 14 times x. 2 minus 2 is 0, 6 minus 6 is 0, so that's also divisible by 11. 2200 is divisible by 11, this is just 200. 206. Is this right? 206. Should work out, I suppose, hopefully. And now minus 11, so this turns into 0. Minus 11, this is uh, 197. No, a 195. Okay. And now the quadratic formula. So x1 and 2 is equal to, this right here dies in Mexico, so we get negative 14 plus or minus the square root of 14 squared is 196. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, minus 195. This right here is just 1. So, meaning our solutions are on the one hand x1 being equal to negative 13. That's interesting, negative number. Or we are going to get x2 being equal to, and hence 1 less, negative 15. So we only get this if we have negative values overall, which is cool. I, would, I wouldn't have expected it to be a negative value. I don't know why. I just thought it would be positive, but it seems to be correct because those are nice numbers. And I hope I didn't mess anything up. And I hope you were also able to solve it down there in the comments below and get the same answer. I hope that's correct. I haven't checked the solutions yet. But I will do so later. And if you want to see more math problems, maybe you want to see an interactive side of mathematics, like visualizing little gauss or the sum of squares visually, then the contents of today's sponsor brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. 
I've talked about it a second ago, but you can actually very nicely visualize little gauss, the sum of squares and the sum of cubes using 1D, 2D or 3D objects. And this is where Brilliant really shines at. With the over 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry. They are going to guide you through the hardest parts of STEM in a very visual and playful manner. Just imagine this, you want to learn something new, for example, algebra or even harder abstract algebra. Brilliant is not like, hey, we are going to bombard you with this huge polynomial and you go figure something out just like your homework at university or at school. No, they do it completely differently. They're going to start off with introductory sentences and also animations that are going to let you slide very softly into the new topic that you want to learn. And this is where Brilliant really shines at. Their visualizations and graphics, their playful interactive courses that you can use to learn something new on the go, for example, using their app, or just at home, at the computer, in a very intuitive manner. It's amazing how they teach you concepts in a way that you wouldn't ever see at university or at school. They're just really good at what they do and you should just check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Go over to their website by using my link here at the top of the description, brain.org slash randomness. You are going to get a 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. You can also use my QR code somewhere up here in the corner. 30 day free trial, try out the whole landscape of Brilliant for completely free and see if it could be something for you. Just take a look at any of those animations that I have here. Doesn't this look extremely appealing? They want you to learn something new on a daily basis and they are really good at it. And if you think like this could turn into a long-term relationship between you and the services, then definitely make sure to entirely use the link and get 20% off an annual premium subscription. It's a great service. They do a huge service to the STEM community and also non-STEM people in general. I use the animations, for example, visual proofs on geometry in my own math classes too, starting from sixth grade upwards. It's really fruitful if you use Brilliant and you should try it out too today. Just check it out, okay, no pressure, but you can support the channel this way highly. And I hope you enjoy today's improvised session. Uh, I, I really like this problem, kinda, I suppose. And I wish you guys a flammable day. See ya.